Good morning, how's it going? And welcome back to a very sunny Cornwall. Now, if you're just here for the recipe, then please scoot forward to this time. If however, you've got a little bit of time on your hands and you'd like to hang out and chill, then please kick back, relax and enjoy today's video. that's bright. Oh, hi chickens. Okay, we've just got Myrtle out of the shed because I've been working on her. She's still a little bit of a building site. We've got this um, new ceiling put in now, which I need to do some more work on and get that painted. But she's looking really cute, a little bit messy but we are getting there. However, today we've actually got friends visiting. It's the bank holiday weekend here in Cornwall. The sun has been shining all weekend and it's been really lovely. So we've got friends here and got Lynn. A lot of you are actually gonna recognize him from the TV. He's like a TV celebrity chef. He's been cooking for Johnny and me all weekend. It's been amazing, we're so, so full. But that said, we've got one more recipe that we're gonna make together in Myrtle. So I need to first of all get around the back and then I need to get her all cleaned up and then I'm gonna get Gotlin in here. I'm gonna get him to cook you guys today's recipe. I really hope you enjoy this one. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. So the van up ahead, that's actually Gotlin and Joe's new van. She's called Bessie. And that's what they've been staying in this weekend. And there's Johnny's van. Oh, I just need to, hang on. I just, oh, uh, oh, there's a big lump there. There we go. And can we just take a moment to appreciate how damn beautiful the weather is today. For a bank holiday weekend, it normally just hoofs it down all weekend. But look at that not a cloud in the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gotlin and Myrtle Cookery Show. Gotlin, take it away with your black pepper beef. The star of the ingredients is of course my beef, or Jane's beef in this case. Um, I'm gonna use a technique uh, which is called velveting. You don't need to do it when the steak is as good as we're using today, but if you are using a cheaper cut of beef and you can find it gets a little bit chewy when you cook, and um, this technique is perfect because it keeps the, it breaks down the fibers in the beef and it makes it a bit more juicy. So I'm not gonna use the fatty part. So I'm just gonna trim this off. And I am doing this in a rush and I probably would, I am lost a little bit of meat there, but it's fine. Let's put that onto one side. So I'm just taking this off first of all. I'll do the same on this one. There are four of us eating this later. So two steaks will be more than enough for four people. Another trick you can use when cutting your beef and to make sure it's really tender is that we cut against the grains, but I'm cutting it at an angle. Now what this does, it shortens the muscle fibers, making sure that the beef is really tender when we eat it. And especially with the velveting technique, we've just got an added bonus. So they're approximately half a centimeter thick each slice. Now I have a nice big bowl. So I've got one mucky hand, one clean hand. So with my mucky hand in there is the beef. Um, I'm going to add approximately a tablespoon to two tablespoons for two steaks of oyster sauce. Now for you gluten-free guys out there, this is gluten-free oyster sauce. So there's no wheat product in there. So if you can get hold of this, you know, so if you are gluten or celiac, you can use this recipe. I'm going to add approximately a heat teaspoon of corn flour. Now the corn flour is just gonna help those fibers relax a little bit. Now this is black pepper beef, so I'm using black pepper. And I want approximately a tablespoon of black pepper. Now it sounds like a lot, but we are cooking black pepper beef. So that's approximately a tablespoon. 
And now what you have to do is get your hand in. And you want to massage this together so it's well incorporated. And every single piece of that meat is coated with oyster sauce, corn flour, and the black pepper. The last thing you have to do after this stage is be patient. Um, this will take a minimum of 20 minutes. Ideally, leave it for two hours. Um, you don't need to pop it in the fridge because you are going to be cooking it in two hours. If you're doing this the night before, obviously cover it with a bit of cling film and pop it in your fridge. And then before you cook it the following day, just let the meat come back up to room temperature. All right, we're just loading the van up with all the ingredients. This is the beef that has been marinating for a little while. And then I'm gonna swap seats with Gotlin and he is gonna cook you guys up a tremendous feast. I'm very excited about this one. Oh, here he is. Hello. Hi, gorgeous. You all right? You excited to cook in Myrtle? Yeah, can't wait. Excited. I think I'm maybe a little bit more excited than he is. <laughs> right, I need to find you a wok, right? Yes. This a man. Wok and a spoon he and needs a, a lid. Wok. A wok, a spoon and a lid. I'll be right back. There you go, chef. <laughs> oh my God, that is so heavy. <laughs> Don't give it me with one hand. Oh my it's goodness. It's fine. Oh, can you manage? Oh, yeah. He's got a bad back at the moment. Sorted. Happy, happy? Lovely, lovely. You know what? I am so excited. I'm finally in Myrtle and I'm cooking for my lovely friend Jane and Johnny. Um, Wok's on. And um, as you saw earlier, we um, velveted the beef in black pepper, oyster sauce and corn flour. So that's been doing its thing for the last two and a half hours now. So in true fashion to this YouTube channel, we're going to do everything in one wok. So I'm going to cook the black pepper beef. We're going to pull it to one side. We're going to pop the rice in, whack a lid on. So just two or three minutes and it'll be nice and warm. And then we've got a full meal for three people. We're using only one wok and a wooden spoon. Now, I don't know if you can see, my wok has started to smoke. In true fashion to all Chinese cookery, everything is ready. So I'm not going to be like hunting around for ingredients. Um, my onions, my peppers are chopped. I've got everything ready here to hand so we can start cooking. This is avocado oil and you're gonna need about two tablespoons. Now it might sound like a lot, but remember there's three people. Now the beauty of avocado oil, so my lovely Jane tells me, it's got a really high smoke point. So therefore it doesn't deteriorate as we're cooking, uh, which is really good. Now, like I said, my wok is hot. Now this may sizzle and spit a little, so do be careful. We're gonna pop my onions in. I'm possibly sat in exactly the wrong place because look, people, there are bare feet right down here. <laughs> and now that I've got the onion covered in the oil, I'm going to pop in my peppers. Now, I need to try and get the heat into these. And it might sound silly, but the whole point of stir frying or cooking in a wok is that we're trying to inject flavour. Now, we can only inject flavour if our wok is red hot. So. As you can hear, it is sizzling, but it's not sizzling loads. So now that everything's covered in oil, I'm gonna leave it alone because I need to try and get that color or that caramelization, which is really important. So be patient guys and pop back in one or two minutes. Right, so I've been really patient and I've given this two or three minutes without touching it. And if you can zoom in, you can start to see now that we've actually started to get a caramelization onto our vegetables. Now it's really important that we try and get as much flavour out of each of these ingredients. Now I have got flavour and they're starting to soften. I'm just going to clear a little bit of a well and I'm going to take this marinated beef or mar say velveted beef really I guess it is but it is marinated and I'm going to pour this into the middle. Now what I've got to try and do I've got to be I've got to try and fan it out so I've got a single layer that's in direct contact with the wok. Now this is what's going to sear the meat. Now the beauty of cooking in myrtle is you have to, it, it teaches you patience. I haven't got this severe heat that I would normally have in a Chinese kitchen or even on a home cooker at home. So I've got about a single layer now. All the veggies are pushed up to one side and I'm just gonna let that beef seal. So exactly the same as the onions and the peppers, I just want to get that caramelization, which is really important. The caramelization is the sh natural sugars that are in the meats and the vegetables. So it's, it's going to give it that sweetness and that depth of flavor that you wouldn't get if we tried to rush this. Remember, this is stir frying and not stir boiling. So have you ever cooked in a camper van before? 
No, I don't. You know, no. You Are know you what? popping your cherry? I think I am. Oh, I think I am. I was, we used to go caravan. As children, we went away in a caravan. Yeah. But my mum did all the cooking because obviously we were kids and we were out playing and stuff. So our typical caravan dinner uh, would be a pot of sticky rice with Chinese lapchong sausage, um, dried shrimps, dried squid, and diced spam all mixed into it and boiled. And then we'd have a bowl of this like meat rice, <laughs> I guess you could call it and then we'll just drizzle over soya sauce. And that's one of the dishes that we used to have all the time. In fact, um, I was with my mum and dad the other day and we were actually, funny enough, we were actually talking about that exact same dish <laughs> and reminiscing a little bit of when, when we used to go caravanning. So we look, we, you know, this is the 70s and 80s and we looked <laughs> like Chinese gypsies, no word of a lie. So. <laughs> when did you start cooking, Gotlin? Um, I've been cooking my entire life. My mum and dad have had restaurants since I was born. So um, I've always been kind of like involved in the restaurants and takeaways don't worry guys if it's, it is sticking a little bit this is a really heavy wok it's a posh one i don't know if a, jane can zoom in but it's a la croissette or something le cruze, mon la le cruze. Le cruze. and it's solid cast iron it is isn't it? it is so you wouldn't normally cook on a cast iron no, wok normally you tend to find with a normal traditional wok they're very thin so they're beaten sort of like carbon steel yeah and then obviously this has got a lovely patina so this is pretty much non-stick now i appreciate we are sticking a little but that's only because it's been sitting there but you know it's just one of those it's going to add the flavor and again guys i'm gonna fan it out and i need to try and cook off some of this moisture that's naturally accumulating in the wok now all right because you know like i said we're not we're not boiling we are trying to stir fry and it is difficult when we're cooking on this little tiny flame but again you know it's one pot cooking and we're in a camper van in a beautiful part of cornwall so i'm happy i'm pretty sure jane's happy she's and going when, to be very very yeah. happy in a minute and when johnny tucks in he's going to be happy too what beef did you use Gottlieb? can you remember yeah this is a beef steak it was a beef steak i can't remember. was it a sirloin or was I think it it was a couple uh, of sirloins yeah wasn't it? i think it was now you don't have to use sirloin steak when making this dish and um, if you use the velveting technique you can use a cheaper cut like a chuck steak or something um, and I, again, the whole point of velveting is just it, it helps break those fibres down. Um, I, again, especially if you cut them against it, cut the cut it against the grain. Um, and you know, it should be it should be juicy, it should be tender. But we'll see, I guess, when we when we start tucking into this later. Okay, um, at this point, guys, I'm going to add a splash of soy sauce. Um, for you guys out there that are gluten free, we are using gluten free soy sauce, obviously you don't have to use this and for this dish I'm going to add approximately two thirds of a tablespoon, oh, actually you know what, a tablespoon of soy sauce. Now Chinese cooking is all about to taste, um, I can't get this, you know, I can't tell this enough really. When you buy my cookbooks, and I do hope you go out and buy one of my cookbooks, and there are three out there at the moment, um, there are recipes and they are measured out. Now you will you know you will get fantastic results from those recipes but some people like dishes more sweet some other people might it might like it with a little bit more of a, a twang to it so therefore you've got to adjust the seasoning so it could be a little bit more salt or a little bit more vinegar or a little bit more sugar or even a little bit more oyster sauce or soya sauce so again use your sort of like you know use your taste buds as you, you know and then you're going to create a dish that you're going to love um oyster sauce i'm going to add approximately two tablespoons this is gluten-free oyster sauce so for you celiacs out there you know and again i've said two tablespoons there might be two and a half tablespoons there for me cooking here now that looks about right for the dish that i'm cooking okay so if you were cooking this on a home gas stove this isn't as hot i can tell that it's not as hot no. as you would normally want would you want that at full whack yes again really hot yeah when you're cooking chinese food it's all about temperature and um, you want to get it as hot as you can and you keep it up at full whack pretty much until the end of the, in, until the end of cooking really um, I am going to add a little bit of sugar now in all the restaurants and takeaways that I've worked in um, across the UK and I've worked you know I've worked in takeaways in Gosport I've worked in takeaways um, up in the north and definitely the Midlands where I'm from um, sugar is added and not only for the sweetness but also to create that extra texture in the mouth so you you kind of like get that it kind of like helps the sauce thicken it you know it's, it's a weird thing but you definitely know if it did or didn't have sugar and i'm not going to use loads i'm going to use one pinch and two pinches of sugar now this is black pepper beef 
and I'm hoping that I've ground enough now. Now we did velvet the beef already in black pepper, so there's quite a lot in there already. But I'm now going to add another teaspoon of black pepper and I'm going to save just a little bit at the end, just so when we serve the dish, we're going to pop that over the top. Myrtle the camper van is smelling incredible right now. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. And because we're going to want it just a line a tiny little bit more saucy, you can either add vegetable stock, beef stock, chicken stock, or plain drinking water. And I'm just going to add a little splash of water just into the sauce. We'll give that a mix. This is weird. It's like, it's like I'm seven years old and peering into the wok over the over the cooker because I'm in a seated position. <laughs> and now normally I'd say you'd thicken, but I don't know if we're going to need to thicken this actually. So if you do need to, if you like your dish really, really saucy, add more water, adjust the seasoning at the very end, and then to thicken it, literally get some corn flour and add some water. Now, I don't know if you can see, but it's gone solid at the bottom. So all we're going to do, just carefully for a start, we're just going to mix this and it will become a liquid again. Okay, because at the moment it's the water separated from the corn flour. Now when we add this, I'm going to, I'm going to add the tiniest amount. When we add this, we're going to add it and we're going to stir at the same time. So just, just so I can, you, you've seen me do it. I add it and I stir straight away. I'm not going to add any more. Normally you would add enough that you get in the consistency of thick double cream or enough to coat the back of the spoon. And definitely if you're pouring this over rice or noodles, the sauce envelopes the rice or noodles. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure it's all nicey, nice and tasty. Um, if you've got a spoon, this is the point at where you dip your spoon in. I don't, so <laughs> it gets the finger taste and the finger taste says it tastes fantastic. So I'm happy with that. Now, this is a one pot recipe and I'm not gonna eat beef, peppers and onions on its own. So, now I don't do this very often guys, but we're using packet rice. I'm gonna take out that because they're not sponsoring us and maybe one day they will, but I'm using packet basmati rice. You could use boiled rice, you could use fried rice, or of course you could cook your own rice, which I'd highly recommend. We're gonna pop this to one side we're going to turn the heat down to low and I'm going to take the spoon out and then I'm going to pop a lid on. Now you need to let that steam for around about three minutes just to warm the rice through. One thing you must remember when warming rice, now ideally you would want to microwave this, um, is to make sure that it's red hot. Now there are things um, which are called spores and that's the bacteria that builds up in the rice. So if you are doing this at home, uh, make sure that rice is red hot before you start eating it, okay? So this is a Q&A with Gotlin Wan. <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> Gotlin, show us your book. Give us a little flash of the book, mate. Okay, so this is Chinese Takeaway in 5. It came out in January 2021. Um, it is five ingredients, so but it's kind of five ingredient. So the idea being behind it was that you use five main ingredients to create the dish, and then five, and then you can have up to five store cupboard ingredients. So let me just choose one. This is random, eyes closed. And condiments. I'm not, no, I don't want condiments. <laughs> so chili, ginger, crispy tofu. Oh, show us the picture, mate. Look so at that, people. The picture, guys. <gasps> so look, 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 look. I'm very lucky that I've got a fantastic publisher called Quadril, and we only use, or they only use the very best. Now, the guy that took this photo, his, guy, his name is Sam Folin, absolutely phenomenal photographer. He's done three of my books, and he's shooting my fourth book. That's a little insight for you guys, and we're shooting the fourth book in July. So going back to the recipe, you can see we've got rest ingredient number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. But then at the bottom, there's also three store cupboard. So most people will have vegetable oil, light soy sauce and sugar in their store cupboard. Yeah. So technically it's eight ingredients, but we've only had to technically buy five essential, oh, five, well, yeah, they are essential ingredients really to create the dish. Okay, so that's Chinese takeaway in five. I've also got for you veggies and vegans out there, the Chinese takeaway, well, the veggie Chinese takeaway cookbook, which came out in two, January 2020. And my first book, which is called Chinese takeaway cookbook, came out in January 2019. Now the red book is all your classics. So we've got the shredded crispy chili beef, we've got the hot and sour soup, we've got the shredded crispy chili duck, 
Oh, not chili duck. Shredded crispy Szechuan duck, sorry. Um, there's the Lohan mixed vegetables. There's the chicken chow mein. There's the fried rice. Jane is literally licking her lips and she's <laughs> drooling as I'm talking, as as as, as am I. Um, so yeah, and, and then that's kind of like what I've been doing. Uh, for you guys that have got Amazon Prime account as well, you can check out Chinese Takeaway Kitchen on Amazon Prime. If you have a Prime account, it's completely free to watch. Um, or if you're currently on furlough or you don't work during the week, check me out on Channel 4 on Steph's Pat Lunch where I'm a regular chef there too. Are we ready guys? So now the rice hopefully should be red hot. The sauce is <laughs> bubbling away. <laughs> And oh, YouTube, are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> and before we serve this, guys, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give this a tiny... This is black pepper beef, remember? Get out! <laughs> this is, we're just going to give a little tiny flourish of black pepper over the top. I'm going to get you a piece. Stop being so bloody impatient. Johnny, he's calling me impatient. <laughs> really? Let me get you, you? Let Don't me, like me. Let me get you a bit that's been sitting in the sauce for a second. Oh, lovely, it's going to be hot. You ready? <gasps> Big mouth. Big mouth, what's he trying to say? Hot. Mm. Nice. Mm. Is it? Let me oh see. my goodness me. <gasps> Guys, if you eat meat, you have to try this one. Wow. That's not bad, is it? Not bad. <laughs> oh my God. Got Luna's cook for us all weekend. And that is my favorite so far. I might not let you go home. <laughs> You can stay and be my personal chef. I'll put this over here. Come on then, guys. Let's clamber in the back, everyone. Jump in. High five, buddy.